On today's episode of You Asked, we're in Las Vegas for CES 2024. That's the intro, run the mid-roll. Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and if you haven't figured it out already, we're doing a special CES edition of You Asked, the show where I answer questions that you ask in hopes of helping you and others with similar tech questions. We are off strip in Las Vegas, sort of the uh, backstage area, if you will, because, well, we wanted to bring you this. I think it's a pretty good backdrop. What do you think? Now, we put out a call for you to ask some CES-related questions earlier, and y'all really came through. Unfortunately, some of those questions kind of presumed that I'd already done CES and seen all the things. Obviously, I haven't. The show has yet to begin. So, I'm gonna leave those for next week's episode of You Asked and focus on the questions that are kind of anticipating what will happen at CES. So let's just dive right into it. At Ultima Neo 21 writes, whatever happened to Vizio? They were leading the budget pack for a while there and suddenly fell way behind and got overtaken by Hisense and TCL. Well, that is kind of a complicated answer. I have some observations. I don't actually know what happened inside Vizio but it is true that they kind of fell behind TCL and Hisense once they moved in. They still made quality TVs. I did review some of them, but they just didn't have the wow factor that some of the Hisense and TCL TVs had at the same price or even lower. Now, I did get a private demonstration back in, I believe it was uh, September, of new TVs from Vizio and the release for those was delayed a little bit, but they're coming out now. Uh, I've been expecting a review sample, but haven't received it yet. I do hope those come through soon. Maybe right after this show is when we will get them. I do think that Vizio avoiding CES or kind of doing CES differently than a lot of other manufacturers may not have actually helped them the way they thought it would. Uh, Vizio has always poured a lot of money into one big ad campaign a year. Uh, I remember they did something uh, during the Super Bowl. That was a really big deal for them. But it's been a few years since we saw anything like that. Anyway, if I had to guess, I'd say Vizio has a really solid chance at making a comeback if the TVs, which look really good, by the way, are as good as they looked sort of subjectively during that evaluation that I had at that onsite. So we'll see, but we don't expect to see Vizio here at the show this year. At Rinsler HDG says, hey Caleb, as CES is starting and there will probably be companies releasing new TV models and such, do you reckon it would be a good time to buy an older model TV since prices will be dropping? Well, that's kind of a perennial question. Right now and through the Super Bowl and just after, we're hearing about the new TVs that are coming out, but the new TVs aren't quite out yet. Yes, prices are very low now, but until the new models start coming out, we won't see those deep, deep discount cuts. Unfortunately, by the time those new models come out, the stock of the prior year models is already starting to dwindle, so it can be harder and harder to get a hold of what you want. I'd say keep an eye on prices, but I wouldn't wait too much longer to buy. At Dark Seven Tide says, Hi Caleb, I was wondering if there will be any new companies putting out TVs. I remember you mentioning a company last year that was new and looking to get into the market, Sky something or other. Sorry, I just can't remember the name for the life of me. Also, will TV manufacturers like Panasonic or Sharp ever appear in the US TV market again? Looking forward to your CES coverage. I'm looking forward to it too. Okay, so I think you're referring to Sky Worth, um, if I'm not mistaken. I looked them up once I saw your question because I remember that same thing, whatever happened to those guys. And it looks like they're distributing in North America, yes, but mostly in Canada. In fact, you can buy those TVs from Canadian Tire and London Drugs, apparently. Anyway, um, I don't know that they're necessarily going to emerge into the US market uh, anytime soon. I'll try to ask them if I see them on the show floor. Um, but other than that, I mean, we had Roku come out into the US market last year and they're making a big push with a pro model this year that I think we all should keep our eyes on. It could turn out to be really good. Uh, and then you've, you're talking about Panasonic and Sharp. Sharp, yes. Panasonic, probably not. I would love for Panasonic to start distributing widely in the US again, but for now, to the best of my knowledge, you can only get Panasonic TVs from special retailers that are spending a few bucks to get them imported. Robert Zone over at Value Electronics 
is one of them. But Sharp TVs, absolutely. Sharp has basically reacquired all of their assets. They are making their own TVs again, and I do believe we will be seeing those TVs here in the US in 2024. At J Patrol says, hey Caleb, what's the scope on audio stuff for this year, and will we see some new soundbar audio? So the scope of audio stuff, I think is actually gonna be very big. I know of a few very interesting things that are coming out from some major manufacturers. Um, Outside of that, I don't really know. I don't know that we can expect to see another Nakamichi Dragon this year, for instance. At least I haven't heard of it. But I do think that we will see the new generation of soundbars from all the major manufacturers and maybe even uh, some surprise hits from some smaller brands. Also, let's keep an eye on Dolby Flex Connect. I have a visit with Dolby to learn more about Flex Connect, and it could turn out to be really cool. We'll see but I am definitely gonna be covering that here at the Digital Trends YouTube channel. At Zoster Inski says, is micro LED getting closer to being available as a consumer product? Um, well, technically it is available as a consumer product, but I think you're wondering, is it gonna be purchasable as like a normal prefab 55, 65, 75, or 85 inch TV? I do think it is getting closer, but I have to say that for all the pre-briefings I've gotten from the major manufacturers, specifically Samsung, and LG who are heavily invested in micro LED for the commercial market, I didn't really see any big news coming from them around micro LED, but we have yet to go to their first look event. And I do hear that there is a new TV that Samsung did not tell us about that we'll be seeing there. That would be tomorrow. The video for that will come out either late tomorrow or early the next morning. So keep tuned to Digital Trends. You'll know the answer to that question very soon. At Vadim Timotin says, name two things you've seen that are the best and worst innovation or feature in any product. What blew your mind and what just left you speechless for all the wrong reasons? Uh, so I don't know if I can name two of the best, but one that really stands out for me was the Willow breast pump. I know it sounds crazy, but this was a few years back Nobody had seen anything like it. It's basically a, a breast pump that a woman can put in their bra. Nobody knows that they're pumping. Um, it's very comfortable apparently, and it stores the milk within the apparatus. It was kind of a game changer. And that's the kind of technology for lifestyle that we really need. I really wanna see more of that kind of innovation in lifestyle products as well as accessibility products. And hopefully we'll see that at this show. As for the worst, I can think of a few. There were vacuum shoes, those were a thing. That was absolutely ridiculous. Um, there was also this apparatus that you would strap over your mouth and face so that you could have private conversations uh, over the phone and nobody could hear you. That was kind of ridiculous uh, and went nowhere as far as I'm aware. Uh, and then one particularly uh, not great product was something made by Withings. You put it in your toilet and you peed on it and it would give you feedback about nutritional data and whether you might be ovulating. And uh, the problem with that, it was that it stored all of this very sensitive information in the cloud. Security was a big concern. And this happened uh, right around the same time, there were some pretty big Supreme Court decisions that called a lot of that stuff into question. So those, those are the ones that kind of stand out in my mind. At Lisa B, a regular at the channel writes, uh, will a lot of your friends in the AV tech space be there? Will you all meet up? What do you actually do there? Just wander through the various displays and presentations and shoot video. Are you actually presenting? Will you only look at AV stuff or are there other kinds of products to look at too? So it really depends on what kind of uh, beat you're on as to uh, how you conduct yourself. Most of us journalists have been pre-briefed on what's coming. We'll go to special first look events or we'll go straight to a booth. Uh, to check a product out in real life after we've already learned about it. Um, later in the show, we might get to wander around and discover some stuff that we haven't heard about, but uh, there is so much here that we have to kind of come in here with a bit of a plan of attack. Um, otherwise, you just wander aimlessly and we don't get a chance to really cover a lot of, or produce a lot of content. Myself, we have a very rigorous schedule of going from uh, LG to Samsung to TCL to Hisense and, uh, and everywhere in between. So we're trying to cover all the TV stuff because TV is my beat, but we've got folks in computing and mobile and gaming and, and, and that kind of thing. So they're all kind of doing their thing. But we leave the wander the show floor for discovery towards the end. Uh, as for the AV tech industry, uh, fellow YouTubers and journalists, 
I hope that some of us can get together this year. It's really tough because our schedules are super packed. So the only time we have to do that kind of thing is usually in the evening and there are press dinners and other stuff that can kind of complicate things. But I do hope that we can have a little bit of a meetup this year. At Anjo 103, a bunch of numbers writes, any news about 16K resolution, TV, monitor, display, etc." No, I have not heard much about 16K resolution, not in consumer TVs at all. I am going to be happy to be surprised. I would not be surprised if we saw some 16K stuff here, but I think that's very pie in the sky, very futuristic type stuff. Um, I don't know that we'll see anything other than some concept prototype thing. At Raven836 says, smaller than 55 inch QD OLED TV panels will exist in 2024. Technically, no, uh, but look at the QD OLED computer monitors that are gonna be coming out at this show. They are basically TVs. So does that qualify? You let me know in the comments. At Sweet Lows 119 says, why do people show off prototypes that they have no intention of making them available to purchase? Is it just supposed to be eye candy to get people in the booth and generate overall company buzz? So yeah, eye candy is a big part of it. Having something bright and flashy draws eyeballs to your booth and that's just good business. It heightens brand awareness among folks and it gets people talking and having conversations and maybe opening up new possibilities. But if you're a small company, showing off that prototype may actually help get it to take off. Maybe you need funding, maybe you need a manufacturing partner. I think a lot of folks forget that a big part of CES is the inside industry stuff where people find support, they find manufacturing partners and such like that so that they can actually get their idea off of the ground. I don't think anybody comes to CES thinking, we're just gonna show this off and then disappear into the ether. But there is such a thing as vaporware where we see something really cool here at the show and that's the last we'll ever see of it because they just didn't get the support that they needed. And also there's this whole chicken or the egg scenario. Uh, think about 4K, right? Why should people be making 4K content if there's no TVs out there to watch it on? Some people would say, well, why should we make 4K TVs unless there's 4K content uh, that you could put on that TV? Oftentimes, these prototypes are sort of the launch pad for a big project. This is when lots of companies get together and say, you know what, we're gonna go ahead and do this. But let's not forget, sometimes it's just fun to see what's possible and dream about the future. So I think there's a little bit of an element of that too. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for all the questions that you sent and keep them coming, keep the comments coming. We are gonna be throwing all kinds of amazing content at you all week through CES 2024. I can't wait to see you there. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like. Something like that? Yeah, Thank you. Great.